this is where we work. Uh, we are we work in India, but we also work in South Asia. We work in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Nepal. Of course, we can't work in Pakistan right now <laughs> with all the uh, things that is happening. And we work in Africa. We we work in East Africa, Ethiopia, Nigeria. So we call ourselves as an institution of the global south, a think tank from the developing country. That's what uh, we call ourselves as. Now, let's go back to the topic, the topic of future of coal. Uh, this is a very famous chart on world energy mix. Now, if you say, see today, uh, in 2012, the world consumed about 13,000 million ton oil equivalent of energy. 13,000 few 300 million tons of, of energy, out of which about 29% came from coal. So coal, uh, is there a pointer here? Which one? Which one? Uh, pointer? Pointer, pointer. <coughs> oh, okay. Right. Okay. So, in 2012, coal provided 29% of global energy of 13,361 million ton, million ton of oil equivalent. Uh, the projection by International Energy Agency is that coal will provide about 24% of global energy of 18,000 million ton of oil equivalent in 2040. So percentage wise, coal will go down, but in absolute term, the quantity of coal consumed in 2040 will be more than the quantity of coal consumed in 2012. 24% of 18,000 is about 6,000 million ton of oil equivalent, whereas 30% 30, 30 of 13 is about 6. So there will be not significant reduction in absolute term, the coal consumption, even from now till the next 25 years. This is what International Energy Agency predicts for coal. If you look at electricity from coal, currently the world produces about 40% electricity from coal, 40%. In 2040, it will produce about 30%. So, Currently, world produces about 9,000 terawatt hour, hour of electricity from coal. In 2040, this number will become 10,000 terawatt hour. So in the next 25 years, we are supposed to, it is projected that we will produce 1,000 terawatt hour more electricity from coal. Now, India's current electricity from coal is about 1,000 terawatt hour. We produce about. So the total electricity generated from coal in India is something that we are going to add in the next 25 years. China, for example, uh, produces about 75% of electricity from coal. It will reduce to about 50%. US, it will significantly reduce because US has found shale gas. US is dependent on gas. And in India also, uh, the proportion of electricity produced from coal uh, is going to reduce by 2040. But in all these countries, in absolute term, there, there won't be a significant reduction in electricity from coal. This is what is going in terms of going to happen in terms of capacity in 2040. We are going to add, the world is going to add about 1360 gigawatt of new coal capacity from now till 2040. 1360. Currently, we have about 2,000 gigawatt capacity. So we are going to add 50%, 60% more capacity of coal by 20, in next 25 years. And most of them will happen in these four countries. China will add about 500 to 6,600 gigawatt of coal. India will add about 150 to 200 gigawatt. Indonesia will add about 50 to 60 gigawatt. And South Africa will add about 10 to 20 gigawatt. So the coal, the future of coal is actually the future of these four countries. It is not about developed world. It is about India, China, Indonesia, and South Africa. 
that's where majority of coal will be produced and consumed. So if you see, in 2040, for example, close to 70% of the coal will be produced in China, India, and Indonesia. These are the countries where coal is projected to be an important source of energy in the future. India, China, Indonesia, South Africa will produce about 70% of total coal in 2040. Now, this is what the projection is. This is what International Energy Agency projects. But there are certain trends which is important to recognize. And we need to understand those trends because future of coal will depend on those trends. The very first trend is there is going to be a huge public pressure to improve environmental performance of coal-based thermal power plant across the world. In India, today it is impossible to construct a coal-based power plant because of public pressure. People don't want coal in their backyard. We have something called as NIMBY, not in my backyard phenomenon. There's a lot of opposition against coal-based power plant in India. And this is because, and this is a study that we did in 2012, the environmental footprint of coal-based power is very, very high. In India, for example, in 2012, uh, we estimated that 65% of total fresh water by industry was used by coal-based power plant. You are lucky because most of your coal-based power plant is coastal coastal power plant and it is not based on fresh water. In India, most of the coal-based power plant is based on rivers and groundwater. So they have huge uh, water impact. Coal is, if you look at land intensity, coal-based power plants are also very intensive in terms of land use. In India, about quarter of a million hectare of land is used in coal-based thermal power plant, including coal mining and plant. 50% of India's greenhouse gas emission is done by coal-based thermal power plant. Half of the country's entire carbon dioxide emissions is from coal-based thermal power plant. Of the total industrial sector, 60% of particulate emission is from coal-based thermal power plant, 45 to 50% of SO2 emissions, 30% of NOx emissions, and 80% of mercury emissions. This is, this is the kind of environmental footprint uh, that is uh, there from coal-based power plant and it is not surprising therefore people don't want coal-based power plant uh, next to their villages and homes. For every unit of coal-based power produced in India and I think you can do the same estimation in Indonesia about 0.7 to 0.8 kg of CO2 is produced from half to one gram of PM is produced about 7 to 8 grams of socks, 5 to 6 grams of NOx, and in case of India, 3.5 to 4 meter cube of water for every unit of electricity. Uh, so this is the environmental footprint uh, of coal-based power plant. So in future, and even now, there is going to be immense pressure on coal-based power plant to improve their environment performance. The good news is we have technology to improve environment performance. Technology is not a problem. We have the best technology in the world available to all countries, from China to India to Indonesia to South Africa, to clean coal-based power plants. I'll come back to that issue a little later. The second trend, one, local environment. The second trend is global environment. Climate change, Paris Agreement is going to put immense pressure on coal-based thermal power sector. That is the second trend. One is local environment, second is global environment. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen this graph, but this is a very important graph from IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And essentially this graph shows that there is a linear relationship between temperature increase and cumulative CO2 emission. There is a fort linear one is to one relationship between temperature increase and CO2 emission, cumulative CO2 emissions. The more you emit cumulatively, the temperature will rise. So for example, if you emit about 500 gigaton of carbon, your temperature will increase about, say, 0.7 degrees. So there is a linear relationship between, now the science is a very, very established science. 
cumulative emission and temperature is linearly related. And therefore, what we have is called as carbon budget. Now we know what is our temperature target. If you know the temperature target, you can know how much carbon dioxide you can emit. It's a very simple linear relationship uh, that is available. Now, for meeting two degrees, for 66% probability, of course, the world can emit only about 1,000 gigaton of carbon dioxide, 1,000 billion tons of carbon dioxide. This is what the world can emit to remain within two degrees for 66% probability of meeting two degrees. If we increase probability by 50%, our carbon budget is about 1,300 gigaton. So the carbon budget for the world from now till 2100, 2010 to 2100, it's a 90 year period, is anywhere between 1000 billion tons to 1300 billion tons. Now, what is the current emission of the world? Any idea how much the world emits every year? We emit about 50 billion tons every year. So the carbon budget available is actually for anywhere between 25 to 30, 20 to 25 years. We will finish at the current emission level of 50 billion tons every year that the world emits right now. China emits about 9 billion tons. India emits about 3 billion tons. I think Indonesia is about 2 billion tons. United States is about 6 billion tons. Total world emits about 50 billion tons of carbon dioxide. We will finish our 2 degrees carbon budget in 20 to 25 years. That's, so if the world wants to meet 2 degrees, which is an important, and I'll come back to that issue, then our carbon budget is truly limited. And therefore, we will hit 2 degrees anywhere between, by 2036, this is the best estimate, and we will hit 1.5 degree by 2025. So all this talk of ambitious climate deal Paris agreement uh, is not actually ambitious because we are going to miss 2 degrees very, very quickly. Now you will ask, what is the importance of 2 degrees? Why we are so worried about 2 degrees? We are worried about 2 degrees because at 2 degrees, we don't know what is going to happen to the world. The world has not seen 2 degrees for a long, long time. For millions of years, the world temperature has remained very stable. In between, there has been a little ice age, a little warming, but we have had a very, very stable temperature in the world. That's why humanity and the mammals grew, because we had a very stable temperature, 16 to 18 degrees. Now, at 2 degrees, for example, we will have very, very high extreme weather events. It could be flood, drought, cyclones, extreme rainfall events, hail storms. So at 2 degrees, we get into an unknown world. And therefore, after 2 degrees, we don't know what is going to happen. It's, it's the science cannot predict the world of 2 degrees warming. That's something that we cannot predict. I want to show you this data, which is a very, very important data, released by insurance companies. You know, money matters. <coughs> you will find the best data actually with banks and insurance companies. Now this is the data on insurance companies on average number of extreme weather events per year by decade from 1900 to 2010. What is the level of extreme weather events? Between 1900 to 1910, 1999, the world only experienced about 2.5 extreme weather events every year. Between 2000 and 2010, this number is about 350. So the number of extreme weather events, even when the world has world temperature has increased only about a degree, has increased hundred folds in hundred years, last hundred years. We don't know what is going to happen when the world reaches two degrees. So because of climate change, Paris Agreement, there will be immense pressure to reduce coal. That's something which is very very important to understand. The third trend is. A very, very important trend is the falling cost of renewable energy and storage technologies. This is how the cost of renewable energy has come down in India, solar energy. Solar energy was about 
1.69 million Indian rupees, 16.9 million Indian rupees in 2010. Now it is 5.31 million rupees in 2016. The capital cost for solar has fallen by 70% in the last seven years in India. Okay, this is the reduction in solar cost in India, 70% in last seven years. And this is the cost of storage technology. People think that we will not have batteries. Industries are spending billions of dollars every year to improve battery technology. This is the cost of battery in 2015, levelized cost of storage in 2015 in euro per megawatt hour. This is going to be the levelized cost of, of storage in 2030. This is pump storage, hydropower. Hydropower is about 100 to 120 euro per megawatt hour. But look at the cost reduction as far as sodium sulfate batteries, or for example, FES batteries. They all are going to come down to 25 euro per megawatt hour, or 2.5 euro cents per kilowatt hour. The moment we will hit less than 5 euro cent per kilowatt hour with solar, no fossil fuel will be able to compete. Gas will certainly not compete. Gas will remain very, very expensive. Coal might compete, but a combination of solar and storage technology is going to be grid parity. It will be difficult for solar. Coal cost is going to increase and these costs are going to fall down. So you are going to have stiff competition between renewable energy with storage and coal in the future. So this is the third trend that the, that the cost of renewable energy is falling drastically. And that is the reason, this is what India has put target for solar energy by 2022, next five years. We want to install 175 gigawatts of renewable power by 2022. 175 gigawatt. About 100,000 megawatt of solar with 40,000 megawatt of solar rooftop in next five years. This is our target. We want to install 60,000 megawatt of wind, 10,000 megawatt of biomass, and 5,000 megawatt of a small hydro. This is India's target on renewable energy. We want to meet 40% of our electricity from non fossil fuel by 2030. And we have put a tax on coal to finance all these. We have put a tax of six and a half dollar per ton on coal and lignite to fund renewable energy. Because we believe in India that very soon renewable energy is going to be the main energy, not the coal. And this is why we are investing so much uh, in renewable energy. The fourth thing which is an important trend, is what I call as the factor 10 trend. That is, there's a potential to improve efficiency of building and appliances by a factor of 10. You can improve efficiency of buildings and all these appliances that you see by 10 times. And we have already seen that in electrical bulb. We have improved the efficiency of electrical bulb by a factor of 10 to 12 times in last 10 years. You all will remember incandescent bulb of 60 watts. Today we have a CFL bulb, LED bulb of 5 watts, giving you same lighting. So there is 10 times improvement possible in the way we are designing our buildings, the way we are designing our lighting, the way we are designing our cooling and heating. <coughs> Energy efficiency is a big market. It's a billion dollar market. It's going to become even bigger. So, we now have energy efficiency building code in most countries. In India, we have mandatory energy efficiency building code. All the new buildings will have to meet energy efficiency building codes. And we have a star rating of appliances and minimum energy efficiency standards. In India, you cannot sell air conditioner lower than three star rating. Because we are now have a star rating uh, system for energy efficiency. So, energy efficiency is going to become very, very big. It's already big, but in future it is going to become extremely big. The fifth trend is, electricity is going to become your prime mover. 
It is going to take you from one place to another place. It is going to cook your fuel, food. This is the projection for electrical vehicles. We all think that we, we will only need gasoline and, and, and diesel vehicle and gas vehicle. Currently, we have about a million electric vehicle in 2015. Just a million electric vehicle across the world. One million electric vehicle in 2015. We are going to have about anywhere between 100 to 140 million electric vehicle by 2030. 100 to 140 million electric vehicle. Very soon, all the companies are going to give you affordable electric vehicles. Electric vehicles is going to become the norm. It is not going to remain the exception. So, one, electricity will be used to move people. Second, electricity will be used to cook food. Today, all of us depend on LPG, gas for cooking our food. In future, induction cooking is going to be the most important cooking source. The efficiency of induction is 84% compared to LPG. This is the most, most efficient way to cook food. And the cost, this is the cost for heating 10 liters of water in India. In LPG, it is about 10 to 11 rupiah in Indian rupiah. Induction is about 5.6, less than half, about half. So it is efficient and it is cheap. So in future, all of us are going to cook our, our food on induction technology. We are not going to cook our food on LPG. Trend number six, we are going to have a smart grid. The current grid is going to become obsolete in 10 years time. We are going to have a grid which is going to be bi-directional. It is going to buy power from us, it is going to sell power to us. We will have electricity on demand. We have video on demand right now. Very soon we are going to have electricity on demand. Whenever you want electricity, you will have electricity. The grid is going to be flexible. It is not going to be the rigid grid that we have right now because we are going to use artificial intelligence for load adjustment and load balancing. There will be there's huge investment going into AIs, artificial intelligence for grid management. And we are going to have far more efficient grid than we have today. In India, the transmission and distribution loss is anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. I think the TND loss in Indonesia is about 5 to 10 percent. These are huge loss. We are going to have efficient grid with less than 2% losses. This is going to be the future of smart grid. Now, if you look at all these six trends, local pollution, climate change, smart grid, moving people, cooking on electricity, energy efficiency, and falling cost of renewable energy. These are the six trends you can see happening across the world. Future of coal. Before I discuss future of coal, let's discuss the future of electricity. Today, this is what electricity is all about. Today, the electricity is about large power plants, centralized big power plants. In case of Indonesia, you have only one distribution company, PLN. Number of countries have different multiple in India, we have multiple distribution companies, but big distribution companies. You have, you have a grid, which is a, which is a high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage grid. This is what, this is what, today the, the, few, the electricity sector is this. In future, you will have electricity sector in three parts. You will still have large power plants to feed heavy industries. You will have medium sized power plants, uh, which is lot of renewable, lot of renewable energy, which will go to small and medium enterprises and commercial establishment. But the most important is going to be small sized producers who are going to feed your commercial and household activity. So the future of electricity is not going to be one future of big power plants. It's actually going to be three separate futures. Let me explain it to you. Let's look at small size producers. And I'm going to give you an example of 
Germany. In Germany, today about 27% of electricity comes from renewable source. You all know it is about 30% now. It, it is a data for uh, 2014. 27%. About 10% hydro, wind and solar is very, very high, about 18 to 19%. Uh, but the most important thing is that more than half of renewable energy capacity is actually owned by citizens, people, not by companies. In Germany, small people, middle class, own power plants, small, small power plant on their rooftop. 1.5 million household in Germany produce solar energy from their rooftop, 1.4 million. Therefore, the future will be of a producer-consumer. I will produce my own electricity, I will consume my own electricity. And therefore, the biggest energy company in the world are going to be aggregators, like Uber. Uber doesn't have one car, they don't have even one car, they aggregate. In future, you will have aggregators who are going to aggregate electricity from each house and sell it to you. That is going to be the future of electricity. You will have millions of houses producing electricity, consuming electricity, selling electricity, companies aggregating electricity. That is going to be the future of electricity. You will have houses which are going to be off-grid. They will not be connected to the grid. They will have solar power, wind power, they will have electrical car and you are going to have solar rooftop housing system it will become almost like an appliances, it will be like going and buying an air conditioner 10 years from now you will go into a shop and buy solar system for your house like you buy bulbs and air conditioner or for example cars this is going to be the future but industries will also install solar to cut costs now, grid power is expensive power, it is not cheap power and therefore you will have industries that will also install solar and wind to cut their manufacturing costs. And this is going to be the major challenge for distribution companies because all your high paying consumer is going to move out. Rich people, big industries are going to move out from the grid. They are likely to become off grid. What will happen to Discom? And therefore, Discom is going to become aggregator distributors. Discom business will change. Today, Discom, which is only supplying electricity, in future, Discoms are going to buy electricity from all of us and then supply to each of us. So, Discoms are going to become bi-directional companies. Today, they are unidirectional companies. They are only selling electricity to us, buying from big companies. They are going to become bi-directional companies. The other thing that is going to happen is there is going to be a big fight going to happen between renewable and coal. Here in Indonesia, five years from now, you will find big fight happening between renewable energy and coal because of merit order dispatch. <clears throat> Across the world, renewable energy gets the first priority over the grid, okay, not the coal. In Germany, for example, there's a big fight happening between coal and renewable because coal companies cannot sell power. Renewable companies have the first priority over the grid. They sell it to the grid and therefore coal companies are stranded. So, you are going to have first, renewable energy will have the first priority over the grid. Second, then you will have... Huh? <laughs> okay. And then you are going to have coal companies asking for capacity charge. If they cannot sell to the grid and they have to operate, they are going to ask for capacity charge to keep operating. So in Germany, for example, there is a big fight happening on capacity payment to coal power companies. Coal power companies cannot sell power, therefore they are asking for capacity charge. The third that is going to happen is, you are going to have energy services companies and not electricity. You will have a lot of companies who will come and say, I'm going to hire this room, I'm going to give you lighting, heating and cooling. You don't need to buy electricity. So you will have energy services rather than electricity. Most of us are going to buy energy services <coughs> rather than electricity in the future. 
And lastly, therefore, grid would become a medium of exchange and it would not remain the main supplier of electricity. Grid will become a platform like web, where you are exchanging information, you are going to exchange electricity. So the nature of grid is also likely to change in the future. What about coal? If this is going to be the scene of electricity, how is it going to look like for coal? It is quite clear to us, most of the analysis that we are doing in India, that coal is going to peak in most countries by 2030. In all countries, the peaking of coal will happen by 2030. China has already decided to peak by 2020, the maximum, and then come down. In most countries, India, Indonesia, and South Africa, with renewable energy targets that you have, India has 40% renewable energy target. I think Indonesia is thinking about 30 or 35% renewable energy target. Your coal will peak by 2030. After that, it will start coming down. Okay? And carbon capture and storage is just not economically viable. $50 a mega per ton of carbon dioxide, you just can't afford. CCS is not economically viable. So, the first thing that is very clear is coal is going to peak by 2030. And therefore, you are going to have Till then, clean coal, because people will demand clean coal technology, supercritical, ultra supercritical, IGCC, and you will have strict pollution standards. Just now, in December 2015, Government of India has come out with new coal standards, which is very, very stringent. We have a SOX standard of 100, NOx standard of 100, mercury standard of 0 0.03, particulate standard of 30, water standard of 2.5 meter cube. Very, very strict standards. On top of it, we have decided to scrap plant which is of 25 years or more age. And we have decided to install only supercritical power plants. So, we are going to have, you, you will have coal, coal will be important, but you are going to have clean coal. You are not going to have dirty coal anymore. What will be the impact of these standards? The impact of these standards is that currently coal-based power plant consumes about 20 billion cubic meters of water in India. It will consume 4 billion cubic meters in 2020. 70% reduction uh, in water consumption. And similarly, we will reduce pollution load, SOx, NOx, PM by 50 to 70%. Even when we will increase our capacity from 186 gigawatt, which is the present capacity, to 300 gigawatt by 27-28. This tells you the potential of clean coal. You can increase coal capacity and still reduce pollution load. That is what the new technologies allow you to do. So, clean coal is going to be the future if you are going to use coal. Let me recap the future of coal and future of electricity fuel. Okay? Coal will remain an important fuel source in medium term. It is not a fuel source for long term. Coal will remain important for the next 20 years. Okay? But its importance will keep reducing after that. And therefore it is important that you do not invest too much in coal because in future it could be a standard asset. I don't know how many of you know China, 50% of steel plants are standard asset because there is no demand for steel across the world. Okay? Coal acceptability will depend on its being clean. It has to be clean coal. Okay? The changing nature of energy architecture will demand flexi coal based power plant. You can step down by 60% very quickly. Coal will have to become very, very flexible. Then only you can compete with renewable energy. Coal as base load is not going to survive. You have to think about coal as a flexi coal. More and more electricity will be produced from renewable sources and consumed by source themselves. The future of electricity is going to be decentralized, distributed generation and consumption. People are going to generate their own energy, consume their own energy in future. You will have energy services and not electricity. There will be dominance of energy service companies in the future. You will have many, many energy service companies. The future of grid will be bi-directional and flexible. Grid <coughs> will be 
smart by the dictionary. And the grid will become a platform for electricity exchange and not a major supplier of electricity because most of the electricity people will produce and consume in houses. And the future of DISCOM will be bi-directional and aggregator. DISCOM will have to change their entire character. This is the future we need to prepare for. Thank you very much. of 30-32% and uh, pollution norms which are uh, 